I just want to do this again. He is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Yeah, it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that every moment of your life, just you have permission from the pastor, okay? Like, just so you know. Um, all right, so we're going to finish this series called Collision. Man, it's just so good to see so many of your faces. <laughs> point somebody and say, hi, I missed you. Oh, you didn't point. Gary, you didn't point. Tom, you didn't point. Now point at someone and say, hi, I missed you. <laughs> Online, hi, I missed you. Okay, that feels a little bit better. It feels awkward to collide with people sometimes, doesn't it? Even to point a finger or something like that. Because that's what I want to talk about. We're going to finish this series, Collide. And specifically, I want to talk about what happens when death collides with life. Because I have a concern sometimes that we, especially on Easter, and I know some of the saints, like Kim's fired up this morning. He's like, ah! You know, and some of us were like, yeah, but sometimes we don't fully feel what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, and I want to, I do believe God gave us feelings and emotions, okay? And it's okay to get in touch with those sometimes. And if you're on the mountain, I want you to turn it up this morning. If you're in the valley, get ready. You're going to be able to come up this morning because we get to hear about resurrection news, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to talk about. So open up your swords, open up your Bibles, open up your Bible app. Open it up online to Luke 24, Luke 24, Luke 24, Luke 24, Luke 24. And now, as we walk through this passage, I want to make sure that all of us understand a whole lot about what's going on here. Because sometimes I think that we can miss Jesus in the moment. And you know what? Here on earth... Sometimes we struggle with missing Jesus in the moment. But all of us can understand at some point in our lives, have you ever missed something in the moment when the future was actually better? You know what I'm talking about? I, my kids, okay, my kids are going from daddy to dad. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to miss daddy. Now, there was a long period of time where I was getting real irritated with, Daddy, 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 Daddy. Now, all of a sudden, I miss that sweet, sweet sound. I miss it. And I realize I wasn't fully engaged in every sweet moment. I had forgotten what the future withheld. At some point, they turned into miserable people. They were so sweet at one time. I thought about a time... When I was a kid and I missed something in the moment, and, and, and I can even, you know, visually show this to you today. Back when I was a kid, um, every year there would be like a Chicago caravan of baseball players, and they'd actually go to Pierre Moran Mall in Elkhart. And if you haven't been there, I would suggest you don't go there ever, okay? <laughs> All right, but they would come in, and, and the White Sox, you know, a couple White Sox stars would come in, a couple Cubs stars would come in. And my dad would take me, and I'd get all fired up, and we'd bring our friends, and they'd have baseball card shows, and then they'd come in, and you're just like, oh, as they enter the room, and they come in, and they sit down. And I remember going in there, and I was so excited, and there was four of them, okay? There was four of them. And First was Steve Lyons, okay? Now, maybe you have seen Steve Lyons on TV because he's a baseball commentator now. And I remember Steve Lyons, and, and he even was talking and kidding around with my sister. It's the first time she ever heard the word flirt, you know what I mean? And then there was Bobby Thigpen, and, and he's in here. And Bobby Thigpen actually had the record for most saves later on, but these guys are rookies, and they're trying to get attention. But the one I wanted to see the most, number three, was Jerome Walton. Now, hands in the air, put your hand up online if you've ever heard of Jerome Walton. Come on, John, John Brown. <laughs> Nothing even close. Now, let me, let me give you what happened with Jerome Walton that year. Jerome Walton set the record for the longest hit streak of any rookie in history. And anything that good ever happened to the Cubs is like Jesus coming back already, right? And so it got, there you go, all right, like it was big deal. And I waited in line longest for Jerome Walton and I couldn't wait. And I got there and I got Jerome Walton's autograph. Now, why don't I have it? That should already be a foreshadowing of the story to come. Because you know who the fourth one was? This Dominican guy who couldn't speak English and I was too long 
the line had been too long and I just didn't want to wait anymore. And I, I had three treasures. I didn't really need a fourth. And he really sat alone. And you know who that fourth person was? Sammy Sosa. No one even wanted Sammy Sosa. Because he didn't do snot his first year. But if we'd have known the future and what was to come, we would have lined up a mile long and waited two hours just to even see and say, I met Sammy Sosa. But I missed it in the moment because I didn't know the future. Maybe you said something to somebody in the moment and you didn't know the future of the damage of your words. Or maybe you didn't fully engage with somebody in the present of the moment because you didn't know you wouldn't see them again. We all know what it's like to miss the moment. And what sticks out in me in Luke 24 is, now if you heard what Jackie read, okay, it talks about when they buried Jesus, okay? And these pagan people, these Jewish people, everybody was worried. So you know what they did? They didn't just throw him in a tomb and throw some massive boulder in front of it. They even say, we heard on the third day he's going to rise from the dead. So we better put some guards there to make sure this doesn't happen. These are the people who killed Jesus. And they knew what could happen on the third day. But why is it in Luke 24, those who followed Jesus the most, I want us to see in the moment or take comfort today in the moment. They missed it because they too in the moment weren't able to think about the future. I mean, look at this. It's right at the beginning of Luke 24. It says, on the first day of the week, every, uh, very, in, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering, on the count of three, I want you to say wondering. I want you to type it online. One, two, three. Wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like shining, uh, like lightning, stood bef beside them. And in their fright, I want you to say fright on the count of three. One, two, three. Fright. The women bowed down with their faces to the ground. And but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? Right there, I want you to see what happens in the moments of death colliding with life. Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? What do they do here? When they walk in, they are wondering. Now, the wondering isn't like, ooh, I'm wondering. This wondering is like, what happened? What's going on? Where's he at? And you can see they're, they're, they're emotional and fright because a lot of times we get trapped in the motion. And then all of a sudden these angels pop down and they fall to the ground. And then the angel knows their heart. And he's like, why are you coming here to see dead when God brings things to life? Why aren't you in wonder of his promise? Why are you stuck in the moment? And then it goes on to say after the angels tell them he's risen. So the women come back. And now I want you to see what the disciples were confused about this whole thing. Okay? And when they came back to the, to the tomb and they told, came back from the tomb, and they told these things to the eleven and to the others. It was Mary Magdalene, jo Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. The eleven who walked and walked and walked and saw the miracles heard him say, I am the resurrection and the life. Heard him say, I will be handed over. They've heard Jesus tell them what's going on, and but they what? Did not believe the women because the words seemed to them like what? Nonsense. 
nonsense. I have to wonder, everybody, I, I passed in the car, I was going out on motorcycles or looking out like they were going out today. My heart actually hurt for them. Because if they truly believed, how could you not want to gather online or in this room to at least once a year worship God? It's because to the world, it's like nonsense. But these folks are the ones who walk with him. They heard the promise. And to them, nonsense. In the moment, it was nonsense. If we truly believed Jesus was the full Lord of our life, that he reigned in me and reigned on earth, why is it we would ever get off the path? Because at moments, to us, it sounds like nonsense. I mean, that, we don't call it that, but we must live like that. So my question to you is, nonsense is just being confused. Confused about who he is in your life. Confused about what God expects of us. Confused about how we can interpret scripture to make our life just a little bit more comfortable. You ever been to scripture to make your life a little more comfortable? And you're like, no, that's why I don't read the Bible, Ben. Oh! <laughs> I love it when people are like, if I just knew as much as you, I would just be on top of the mountain. I'm like, no, you would be tormented. You would be tormented. Because we can do just about anything to bend Scripture. I mean, that's what the devil did to Jesus. That's what happened in the garden. The serpent took Jesus' words and bent them. It's been going on since the beginning of time. And sometimes God's word to us just seems like a little bit of nonsense. Not a full nonsense, just a little. So how does that happen? How do we get confused about Jesus being the Lord of our life? How does this happen? Okay, I want to give you three things really fast, okay? This is so Eastery, right? We started all gay three. I've got a suit on, and i got three points, Okay. <laughs> just so it doesn't feel like nonsense or no one's confused. And Shacko, if you're watching online, you tried to one-up me a few weeks ago when you gave the message. Ha! Three-piece loser. All right. All right. What causes, what causes nonsense? Okay, first, I think it's our perspective that confuses us, okay? It's our perspective. Now, what I mean is this. Martin Luther came up with a very famous doctrine. It's, it's the doctrine of two kingdoms. Sometimes you hear it called the doctrine of law or the doctrine of grace. And what Martin Luther was saying, because a lot of us get confused, right? Are we living in the kingdom of God right now? Or will we live in the kingdom of God right now? I mean, this, some of this stuff confounds theologians to this day. And maybe the devil wants you to pontificate on it so much that he gets you off the path. Now, the idea of this is that we live on earth. And those of us who know we've been saved by grace, through faith, in Christ alone. Not through any works that we can boast. What it means is, is those of us who are saved and sanctified, we have one foot firmly in the world and we have one foot firmly in the kingdom of God. In this world, there's a law governed by the, by the state, governed by the church, governed by the word of God. And on this foot, you're governed fully in the kingdom of heaven. But on both sides, he reigns. Hallelujah. Okay? That's what that doctrine is. And, and don't go, oh, bang, you just talk Lutheran. No, every pretty much Protestant belie uh, denomination believes that. Okay? So here's the problem. Here's what happens. Here's what gets us off. It's like Solomon was so smart, he knew what we were going to struggle with thousands of years after he talked, okay? That's how wise Solomon was. Now, this is what he says in Ecclesiastes. He's, he's ranting about life. It says, in this meaningless life of mine, I have seen both. Now, catch this. Everybody shout both on the count of three. One, two, three. Both. The righteous perishing in their righteousness and the wicked living long in their wickedness. You don't hear that too often, huh? You can be over righteous, 
you can be overbaked and perishing? Ooh, that feels weird, doesn't it? And the wicked. You're like, oh, Ben, don't forget the wicked now. I got that cousin I got to go see and eat a ham with after this. Okay, them too. Okay, but here's the command. Do not be over-righteous, neither be over-wise. Why destroy yourself? Don't be wicked and don't be a fool. Why die before your time? Don't get stuck in the moment. It's good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. Huh. Whoever fears God, listen to me, whoever fears God will what? Avoid all extremes. Now we get, okay, the foot in the world and how you can be very, very wicked. But what about when we have this foot in the kingdom of righteousness and we get over-righteous? Anybody know somebody who's over-righteous? That can be a lot of religion without any power. That can be just going to church or just praying once a day or just walking around and hitting somebody in the head with a whole bunch of Bible verses. That can be legalism. That can be routine. That is what we call over-righteous. And you know what? It doesn't work. And when you put your hope into being over-righteous in those things, guess what? The Bible says you will perish. You get stuck in the moment because you go too far to what? Extremes. If you feared God as believers and believed that the Bible said, he, knew no, he who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God. If you know you're right with Jesus, why would you go to either extreme? That's where we get confused. You know where chaos comes from? Being comfortable. I'm serious. Hear what I said. Steve Gage, thank you for giving me that the other day. Chaos comes from being comfortable. It's comfortable to be in my religious routine. It's comfortable to get high in the moment. It's comfortable to say, I want a whole lot of money so I don't have to worry. But all those moments you can get trapped in and not think about the end. It's so easy to get caught in the moment. It's so easy to get caught in the world. And either and both will lead to perishing. We cannot get comfortable. That's not living in faith. Not living in faith means the light doesn't shine in the darkness. You know, here's a funny story. In our home group, I won't say their name, but they know what I'm about to say. They were talking two, this was two weeks ago, four weeks ago, three, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And they were talking about how I was talking uh, at the beginning of the year on, on habits. And they were watching online and they heard me talk about testing God. So we would come back stronger in faith. And we talked about testing God with your finances. And he said the Holy Spirit's convicted him as he's watching online. He's like, I don't like this message, but I really want to do something in faith and see God show up. And he, Ur, Ur, and he turned on the Tithe app and he hit it. And he's like, there you go, Ben. Do something, God. He got stuck in the moment in anger. And guess what? Next week, he got a bonus he wasn't expecting. And do you know what he did? He moved to the foot of the world. And somebody said to him, are you second-guessing him if, you do, if he does it again? We limit ourselves to just one miracle, don't we? You ever thought about that? The resurrection was the best miracle, but Jesus still has miracles for you every single day. Every moment of your life, you are a walking miracle. You were not star-spangled awesome when you were born. Okay, all of us, every one of us was born 
into sin. All of us. And the only thing that makes us righteous, that gives us one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom, is the blood of Jesus that covers us. So let's fear God a little bit. When you got your eyes on God, you fear him, but you don't get confused. You don't get caught in the moment. You don't get trapped in the world. You don't get trapped in religion. You get trapped in walking with him. That's when he lights the path. That's when you see the miracles. Don't second guess just because he did one miracle. He's still got miracles left for you, Bruce. He's got a ton left, Eugene. He's got a ton left, Barb. He's got miracles for every one of us. And I can't wait to see what he does. That's their perspective. Now, what else do they have? They can get confused easily by God's love. I mean, God's love confounds all human reason, right? What is, what is the ultimate demonstration we know of God's love that explains our salvation? It's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace. Oh, man, today we got to shout grace louder than anything else. Type it in caps. One, two, three. Grace. Do it again. Grace. You have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that we can boast. If you did it by works, guess what? When you got one foot in the kingdom, you're getting overbaked righteous. One foot over here, you can never do enough to be right with God. But Jesus died so you can be right with God. He knows what you did in the corner. He knows what you watched. He knows what you listened to. He knows what you've done. He knows every hateful thought. He knows every cynical move. He knows every white lie. He knows everything about your attitude that is crunchy and crusty, that does not glorify him. And yet he says, ooh, you're right with me, Amanda Brown. You're right with me because I love you so much. I have come for you no matter what what? I'm just going to keep loving you. Time to sing REO Speedwagon, right? I'm going to keep on loving you. Yeah, yeah. Randy's like, stop, dude, stop. All right. Hey, you want to see the righteousness of God? I'll show you. You want to see the grace and the love of God? There you go, girl. There you go, girl. There you go, girl. Just going to make it rain. Just gonna do that. I've never got to do that in church before. It's not how you dressed. It's not how you came. It's because God loves you so much. He says, here you go, girl. Here you go. I got you. Now, that's the love of God. You know what the foot in the world does? Give me that money back. Girl, I'm a poor preacher. What are you doing? Don't throw that on the floor. <laughs> it's my life savings right up in here. Counterfeit. It's counterfeit. <laughs> no, it's real. <laughs> it's real. But that's the world's love, isn't it? I give you some because it's easy. But I take it back when it becomes uncomfortable. Man, that's not God's love. You know what we celebrate on Monday, Thursday, right? It's not Monday, Thursday. I kept trying to teach my kids the Holy Week all week. They're like, Monday, Thursday, what? No, the word Monday in Greek means command. And the idea is, is that's why you see people wash their feet, people's feet on Monday, Thursday. Because you want to know why? Because Jesus gave his greatest command. Love others as I have loved you. And you know what? They could have got caught in the moment and confused, right? I mean, Jesus is washing my feet, and now he's telling me to love people like he loved me. He, they don't even know the extent about what he's going to do. It's going to be immeasurably more than they could ask or imagine. But they ain't seen nothing like that. Matter of fact, the world has never seen anything like what's to come. But we can get confused by God's love just in the moment when we hear it. I mean, don't you feel a little confused right now when you hear it? It's just like he just keeps loving me. Don't you know 
Don't you know? I don't, but he does. And he's loving you anyway. Not because of what you've done. Done. Not because of what you did. I'm not in Alabama anymore. Not because of what you did. Done. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> but because of who he is. Don't get confused by that amazing love. And that happens when we got one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. You're okay, baby. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You will be able to love like him. Don't get caught in the moment. Don't get stirred to one side. Because you'll perish. Keep your eyes on him. And he will show you that love. And you will show that love. And the world will shine because of you. Now the last thing I think sometimes we get confused by real easy the power of the gospel when we get stuck in the moment just like the women who went just like the apostles who heard they get stuck in the moment by the good news of jesus christ we get stuck in the moment when we got one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom, and our eyes on God, and, and you know we're trying to love, we're trying to love, not the world, not religion. We go, we go, we go, we go. And sometimes we don't see any power. We don't see any power because we get stuck in the moment over here. You get stuck in the moment over here. Brothers and sisters, just stand here right now and hear Paul's words. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone. Every one of you, me, and the world. That is where the power resides. Your power will never work in religion. And your power will never work. In the world, we have to have faith that the middle is where Jesus wants to live, wants us to live. And when we walk in that moment and we stay in that light because we fear God. Now, I'm not cowering from God, although I could, okay? Fear just means to be obedient to God. It means to do the next right thing. When you get confused and you get scared and you don't know what to do, just do the next right thing. Don't overthink all the steps. Because when you start over trying to think the future, the future looks dark because the light is shining in you. His word is a lamp onto our feet. It's not a lighthouse, it's a lamp. You can only see so far. This world, isn't a, <laughs> this world is not a sprint. That's why the Holy Spirit tells us to walk in the Spirit. He didn't say run. He said walk. When you get out of here today, I don't want you running at somebody and just thrusting them with you're going to hell, believe in Jesus. There's no power in that. There's just stupid in that. All right? There's no power. You can't save anybody, but Jesus can. That's where we see his resurrection. That's where the power is. The gospel's the good news for us because it says Jesus took my sin and he took your sin. And you know what he did? Gave up his life on the cross. And then he sat quiet on what I call sad Saturday. And everybody's sitting there. Everybody's confused in the moment. Even though they've heard the future. They know the power of the future in the resurrection from the dead. My sin and your sin could not keep him down. The sins of everyone in this world for thousands of years couldn't keep him down. You want to know why? Because Jesus was God in the flesh. You can't kill God. You can't kill God. You can't kill God. The world can't kill God. Your sins that you knew in the corner can't keep him down. And you know what happens? He gives you that same power when you ask him to come into your life. He didn't give you power to enjoy the world. He didn't give you power to enjoy religion. He gave you power 
to walk in him. And listen to me right now. Look right here, okay? Look right here. He can do a miracle right now. Did you know that? Do you believe that? Do you believe it? He can do a miracle right now in your life, in mine, and in the world. Why don't we walk down the middle trusting in him? That's where we don't see the power. But what if we walked out and simply knew to do the next right thing? To be a light in a dark place. To live with resurrection power in our lives. And that power, I promise you, brothers and sisters, yields love. It yields joy. It yields peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. You can have every one of those things in your life. But you got to acknowledge the idea right now. One, if you've never let Jesus be the Lord of your life, and you're just like, Ben, I'm just living in the world. Come to Jesus. If you're like this, the overrighteous, and coronavirus has made you mad, look where you are today. A whole lot of people love Jesus. A whole lot of us want to come back to him. You didn't come back to him because you came to church. You come back to him when you repent. When you say, Lord, I missed religion. Come back to him and say, you be my life. Look, I got, I got crusty during this time. I did. And I've lived half my life over here. I've put my trust in what I do and go, I'm good with God because I'm a preacher. And I've put everything I've had over here and been homeless. I know where death is on both sides because I felt it, experienced, and y'all, I've lived it. But I don't have to live that way. Today, I can collide with him. You can collide with him. Because whatever death is in you, and remember, death is in all sides. You can collide with the light in the dark place if you don't get stuck in the moment. And I just want you to close your eyes right now. Please, close them with me. Close them online. Get ready. Engage here right now. Hear what I have to say. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. I want to ask you right now, all of you in your hearts in this room and online, with your eyes closed, you don't need to be embarrassed. This is between you and the Lord. If you took one inch into the world during this last year, and you want to say, Jesus, I'm sorry, and come back to him, why don't you put your hand in the air? If throughout the last year you've put one foot too far in religion and you let this world get you angry because even the rocks can cry out and his, peer, his people can worship him in spirit and truth and you want to say, I'm sorry, put your hand in the air. Come back to him. Brothers and sisters, his grace is sufficient for all of those sins. This is the day where you can come back and firmly put one foot in the world and firmly put one foot in the kingdom. We don't have to veer to the left. We don't have to veer to the right. So my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the Lord. And here's the promise. Your labor will not be in vain.
that they can't stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, amen? We gather because of the name of Jesus, amen? We give our lives over to him because of what he did for us, amen? We get to walk out of here and be a light to the world, amen? We trust in him alone, amen? We give our lives, our faith, our money, our time, and everything we have over to him, amen? God, I confess I have had one foot too far in religion since last Easter. I've had one foot in the world since last Easter. And sometimes, God, I confess I've gone too far on each side. But I thank you that for me and for anyone else in this room, you love us so much you never took your love away. God, give us the faith today to go out and live for you, not for our spouses, not for our kids, not for our job, not for our teens, not for anything that gives us joy other than you, because you reign. Help us avoid all extremes. Help us avoid all things to the left, all things to the right. Help us give ourselves fully to you and see the resurrection power in all of our lives today. Help us believe you do miracles, not just 2,000 years ago, but right now. When we go out, we confess Jesus, not our job, not anything else, not hurt, have it, or hang up. We're not defined by our fear. We're not defined by our shame. We're not defined by our sins. We're not defined by how sweet we are. We're not defined by how much Bible we read. We're not defined by how many prayers we say. We're defined by you. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Help us know your power. Holy Spirit, come into our lives. Breathe a freshness in us. Help us to know we were scattered, but now we've gathered. God, give us your power in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Raise your hands in the air, saints. Know that he loves you. He wouldn't have taken the sins of the world on you if he didn't love you. Know that he knows when you went to the left. Know that he knows when you went to the right. And know that he's right there in the middle saying, come on, baby. Come on, come on. The world still needs the light I'm shining in you. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has a place because we're the priesthood of believers. And here's the blessing for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine down upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord continue to look upon us all with favor. And may the Lord give us Let's go put light in dark places. Let's always shine bright into others. Amen? Amen. Go, brothers and sisters. Have a great day.